We're actually getting out here a lot earlier than I thought we would. This is weird. Huh. It's Hall Halloween. Happy yeah. Halloween, by the way. Yeah, you too, bud. Hopefully we shoot a oh. big, scary ass, big old. Checking in from the meat locker 2.0. Grant and I built this blind this summer. And we are reaping the rewards much earlier than we thought. It's October 31st, happy Halloween. And we have got about four inches of snow and about a dozen long beards, 30 yards in closing. I'm gonna make this interview quick. Hunting on our favorite farm, it was struck with EHD. We do not have a single deer over three and a half on camera yet. But we're holding out. We have a camera card that we need to check after we just knocked this corn down. And EHD does not affect turkeys. Gotta have a turkey tag. So we're gonna get one of these really quick. Nice. Yeah, this Tom right here. If he comes out, I'm gonna shoot him. This one in the opening. Mm -hmm. He's got good hooks on him. Our rutcation is underway. Grant had and I had strategically really picked these set of days so we could hunt a long period of time, get back to work, get caught up, and then hunt again. Um, first day was a bust and kind of deflated us to a certain extent just because we had high hopes and we really didn't see much activity. The next day we were hunting in a spot where we had a lot of line of sight and we just we wanted to be able to see what was really going on if the rut was in full swing or if it was just picking up and as the cold front moved in for that uh, that series of days the wind switched and it started blowing right in our face which is great however the gusts were 30 40 miles an hour and it is november 6th we have it off until the end of the day on the 13th We'll be hunting every single day and probably all of every single day, barring that we don't kill or we need to make a stand change or that the weather just completely goes south. It's the first time we're back in a stand we call the hedge set. The corn is out, it is November, and we're using Boris the Buck decoy. We're gonna give it about five minutes, let the sun creep up just a little bit more, and then we're gonna get pretty aggressive with calling. We have the ability to see today, so Sight calling will be a thing, and hopefully within the next stretch of seven to eight days, we can uh, put one or two down. How's that? Not as good as I remember. <laughs> but better than nothing. All right, well. We are making some moves. Uh, if you can't tell from the mic, it's super windy. The wind has switched out of the north, which we knew it would, but where we're at, it's just like a wind tunnel howling through here. I don't think deer are gonna wanna be on this flat with this high winds. We've seen a couple deer in the bottoms out of the wind, so we're actually gonna jump down, grab Boris, and head to a new stand that we call the trench. It's in a deep bottom, heavy trail. We're making some moves. We hung this stand a couple days ago for the rut here, but we have a north northwest wind, but I don't know. This might stand might be short lived because it's coming up off this hill and it's just shooting straight down the draw, which is terrible. I'm kind of talking to Grant how we, we probably should have thought about this beforehand, not knowing if we're doing more harm than good. You know, really if we were getting too aggressive at the beginning of our rutcation and just just so happens to be the bows hung up we're all set up the camera arms on and we're ready and we had not been set up for 10 minutes and i look and all i see is just a big frame coming right down the trail that we were going to hunt i told grant i said there's a good deer here as soon as he came through the big sweeping beams and the short floors we knew it was a deer we called ek10 and an opportunity at a mature deer 24 yards i'm not letting him go Shoot him in the second hole. 
Good. Hold him. Oh, dude. He's going to crash right in front of me. That happened fast. It's a great deer. Yeah, dude. You just smoked his ass. Boy, you just... I can't believe that happened. That was incredible. Oh. Can you believe that? Uh, no, I can't. How about them apples? Jesus. <laughs> Sorry to hit me now a little bit. God dang. That was fast. That buck's been in here. We got him all over. But... Smoker shot too, by the way. Yeah, thanks. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> it's going to be a good stretch of days, my friend. <sighs> Natty B. Buck down. Yeah. It's no nonsense, buddy. If this deer lives from this shot, then he is invincible. I heart shot him. He was squirting blood. I, I mean, if, if we weren't in this bottom, we just saw him go down. Yeah, so we literally switched stands a half an hour ago. Who is it? Mr. Hines, there's four phone. Well, you know what that means. If you get an afternoon call in November, we're gonna go see if we can recover that deer. I think he's dead. He's absolutely dead. I think so too. So, man, it is a good feeling. Go see what it looks like. Here's a point of impact. I mean, come on now, brother. Kill zone. I mean, look at it on this. <laughs> he ain't gonna be able to handle that. Man. Hey, here's my arrow. Here's my arrow. That thing is the most blood-soaked arrow I think I've ever had. Like, look at that. He's right there. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful deer. Well, we just found this joker, and uh, I, I had to hammer it. Right in the heart, the blood was just insane. Uh, and he's just one of those deer that showed up. We've been running cameras on this farm since early summer. And three days ago, this buck showed up. He probably was only gonna stick around for three or four more days and then be gone. Beautiful deer, happy to tag him. And uh, it's one heck of a way to start our rutcation. Get a buck. If you like listening to hunting stories as much as watching them, then check out our podcast. The Last Breath Hunt Cast is available on iTunes, Spotify, and all other major podcast platforms.